Hi, how you doing? Justin here with some more Music Business 101 answers for you. I'm here with my friend James Taylor from the Music Business Institute. Uh, we, so far we've talked a little bit about copyright and about publishing, so today we're going to have a little bit of a chat about record deals and, and actually getting your music out there. So. Does anyone actually get record deals anymore? And does anyone, should anybody, anyone actually be trying to get a record deal? Or is that kind of? It, it's really changed. I mean, if you think about it, the record deal is a relatively modern concept. It's only kind of come about, you know, 30s, 40s, when that's, that's before that, most artists, most musicians made their money from performing live. That was that was mm -hmm. the, the main way. You know, Mozart, Beethoven, they, they never had a, a record deal, but it, it, obviously we, we came into this period where record deals were a big thing. Um, and then, you know, they really kind of hit their height 70s and 80s, go, you know, and then gradually have kind of, they, they, they've morphed into different things. Now you, you now hear things like what's called the 360 deal. Mm -hmm. Where a company will become involved with you, like EMI with Robbie Williams, where they'll they'll actually help you as an artist, not just in your records, but also your live and your merchandise in different areas. So the first question you need to ask yourself about, you know, think about record deals is actually is it right for me? Do I necessarily want a record deal? And more often than not, the answer is no. Um, it depends what stage you're at in, in, in your career. But I, I kind of I talk about this, you know, the, the stages of development of an artist and uh, from a video all about this kind of before and you kind of need to think about what stage you're at as an artist, but generally, you know, that the very first stage is just to be trying stuff, and you don't need a record deal for that. Mm. And then, if you want to get your stuff and to build your fan base and to build really to get your music out to fans and to build a fan base, you don't need a record deal for that either. So, where does a record label? Where is a record label really useful for now? Mm -hmm. um, and I would say, to some extent, A and R. If you have a really good record label and they have a really good artist and, and repertoire, where they can say, actually what, what's A and R? Yeah, artist and repertoire. Like it, it's, work, yeah. it's basically a guy or a girl, uh, you know, the, who will work with you at the record label to help you develop. And some artists, this is really useful because they've 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 maybe got. Um, They've got a bit of a sound initially, but they need to help on developing that, and that's where an A&R person can become really useful. So that's one thing that record companies still do very well, mm. the good ones do. And then the other one is, frankly, money. You know, it comes down to, 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 to money something. Sometimes you just need to have that big company behind you to help push you and, and to put some money behind you to, for your, your, you know, making you known. Because a lot of the other things, like distribution, well, distribution is relatively easy now, much easier in terms of if you want to get your music out there, there's never been more mm -hmm. channels for distribution. Marketing, well, for many of the top artists now, even on major labels, they actually bring in their own marketing teams. They don't use mm -hmm. in-house record label marketing teams. So the first thing I would say, if you're maybe just getting started or maybe you're looking to you know, do a uh, first couple of uh, first release or something, until you real, really start getting traction, I would generally say do it yourself. And then at the other end of the scale, if you're an artist that's maybe had some success, you've been doing something for a while, and what we call kind of you call legacy artists, you know those those you know the, you know, the Eagles and stuff. Well, mm -hmm. frankly, the Eagles' last album was done with uh, Walmart. I think it wasn't even done with a traditional record label. So, where the record label can I think can really help is artist development and also bringing some some cash, some capital to it as well. But it's not necessarily the way that you have to go. Mm -hmm. Then the other question you have to ask yourself, well. Okay, I think I think a, a record label would be right for me. Is what kind of record label do you want? You could have, you know, an, a real indie, a real strong kind of indie, you know, like a Domino record type type of situation. Um, who can, uh, you know, just by being a part of that record label can actually bring you a lot of fans. For example, if you're a jazz artist, if you mm -hmm. sign with ECM, there's a cachet to that. There's a real kind of thing to that. And also, you're part of a heritage of, of artists that you might just want to be part of. Then you kind of go up, you have um, maybe larger indies who maybe have the distribution that goes through a major and could be useful. Mm -hmm. And then you have major labels themselves. But um, I, I've, I've been involved, I've had artists on all the same, all of these and doing it themselves. Um, and it, you really have to ask yourself the question, what stage in development I, as a, I, am I as an artist? And where do I want to? Where's the next thing that I want to kind of get to? And sometimes, actually, you're you're, you're better doing that yourself. Not always, but but I would say probably the majority of the time. Hmm. Now, it, uh, when you sign a record deal, you get like millions of dollars, right? You, they, if they only just give it to you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there the, the used to be a there used to be a saying, certainly in the 70s and 80s. I can't remember which manager said it. Said said to his artist, "If you ever receive a royalty check, I've done my job wrong." 
And what they meant by that is I've got you so much cash up front that they'll never recoup. Now, mm -hmm. I should probably explain at this point about recoupment and exactly. royalties because yeah. it, it can be a little bit of a complicated issue. So what traditionally happened is that a record label would um, sign you as an artist and there, there would be like two chunks of money. One would be like uh, the artist advance, a personal advance, and the other one is the recording advance. And the recording advance went to going into the studio and recording, and the personal advance was basically the cash you got mm -hmm. as part of it. And then gradually what happened is over time, these were recoupable, which meant that they couldn't just like, it's not like a bank loan where they could suddenly call in the money, but after all the money came in from them selling all your recordings, that, gra that amount would gradually be reduced first, but they'd pay off that initial investment, the advances, and maybe some other things, and then what would happen is you'd receive a royalty. Now, things have changed, um, and you know it used to be that the artist received maybe 9% of the lowest side, the, the, the most I heard an artist receive was about 20%, that's Paul McCartney land, wow. um, when mm -hmm. you've got a big brand. but. Uh, but that was kind of the, 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 the areas. And used to get, you know, especially in the 80s, artists were getting huge advances and, you know, blowing it on various mm -hmm. you know, things. But um, so that's changed now. Now what you're finding more is the deals are slightly different. And, and with that, if, you, if you're recording for a record label on that type of deal, they would own the rights, what we call the master rights, the rights in the recording itself. So they could go and do whatever they wanted really within reason with, those, with, that, with that recording. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing more and more, this is this is a general theme, is that because it's so cost effective now for artists to record themselves at home, a lot of labels are essentially working on 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 a, what we call like a net rev share, net revenue share deal, where they're saying you go and pay for your own recording, you record it yourself, and what we'll do is we'll release it on our label, and we'll do um, what's called something called a P and D deal, pre, you know, uh, uh, press and distribution uh -huh. deal, where we'll go out and promote it, and we'll distribute it and put it out there. Um, but you get to keep your rights. You get to keep mm. your recording rights. So it means that, let's say, if you're if you're recording something, you can record an album or even a song, and you give it to a record label on a licensing deal, maybe for a couple of years, or depending on what what it is. But you retain ownership of it, and then after that. Period has elapsed. The, the songs, the, the the recordings come back to you, and that's that's the thing that's happening more and more. And this is by artists of all different levels. So when and this you, is majors as well as independent, it, all all yeah. above, all, all wow. the above. Yeah. So it, it all depends on your your um, power as an artist. And and this is, you know, in in, in the, the bad old days, what an artist like proves like me would do, is I would go and take out an advert, and I would go and find four good-looking boys or four, four good-looking girls. I would put them in a house together. I would keep them in that house for a couple of months. I would have really good songwriters come in and write songs for them. I would style them. I would record record probably even record the album with them there. Put the whole package together, and I would then go to the record company and say to them, "How much are you willing to pay me for this?" Mm -hmm. Things have changed a little bit now, and the, the, the where your value is as, as an artist now, from a record label perspective, is how big is your platform? I you know, and platform can mean how many people do you have on your email list, how many um, Facebook fan mm -hmm. likes do you have? You know, when when MySpace was a bigger thing, you know, the Arctic Monkeys yeah, got yeah. signed. And I, you know, I, for a while afterwards, I had lots of you know record label executives say, saying, you know, how many uh, friends have you got? How many of your Facebook, yeah, so your uh, MySpace friends, and that almost determined the value of the deal that you got as right. well. But you know, I, I think there's there's nothing that can really get away from building your fan base. That's really where the strength of an artist lives, because you can then walk into if you've got a big enough fan base, you can walk into any record label and kind of set more of your own terms. So that's where the strength, you should always be, the record label is incredibly useful, incredibly powerful, having a record label deal is great because it can bring a lot of experience and resources to it, but never underestimate the real relationship you want to have is with you and your fans. That's the most important relationship in any deal. Hmm. That's a kind of a, big, that's a, a pretty massive point. Uh, I've got quite a few friends that are bitter and, and uh, have been shafted by record companies over the years yeah. that are, are, are thoroughly uh, against them. But I guess now we get a chance to directly relate with fans as opposed to it being always through the medium of a record company. That's yeah. a pretty big change in... And it's great. Music. I mean, you've got this whole thing. It's called direct fan marketing now, which is you know, much, much bigger, where you, know, you can really build your own record label. You can build your own platform. You can do everything yourself. So you know, the record labels have to justify themselves a little bit more now. Um, and uh, so, you, 
so you can really do a lot of it yourself but that's not to say you should do a lot of it yourself because there, there will come a time where regardless of where you are in your career where you need to work with other people that's the fundamentals of it it could be just having someone that's you know your manager or some, if you're touring artist, having like a tech on the road with you it could be at that level but fundamentally what you're doing any big artist whether it's U2 or Bon Jovi any of these bigger artists what are they at the, you know at that level what they're really doing is they have built a phenomenal team around them you only see that one person or that one band up on stage an example but frankly for every mm -hmm. one of them there's probably 10 people behind there that are going on and that's where you start to change as an artist and you're you're really you're you're leading a tribe more than anything mm -hmm. else rather than just being a, just doing it for yourself wow okay well, actually, I've learned some stuff about how the modern world of record deals as well. Uh, if you want any more information, you can go and check out James's website, which is the Music Business Institute .com. I'll put a link in the description as well. Uh, thank you very much Great. for coming in. Good man. to see you. Really good, good to see you. Hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, questions below or on the forum on my website will be grand. Uh, and if you've got more questions, uh, ask away, and maybe we'll get James to come back Happy again and uh, do another Q and A session for you. So uh, see you all very soon. Take care. Thanks.